Sometimes it sure feels like the authors are getting paid by the word. Hmm. But RFC authors, they don't get paid, do they? Welcome back to the MVPN video series. In this video, we introduce the first individual pieces that form the BGP MVPN NLRI, and then proceed to take a deeper dive into them. The goal is not just to know the components, but understand the need for each one and how it fits into the overall MVPN framework. Let's begin. The main motivation behind this SAFI was to emulate as many functions of PIM as possible, but via BGP. From that perspective, it is beneficial to think of these new BGP routes, or as the specification calls them, route types, as replacements for existing PIM messages. With that said, I would suggest to hold judgment on the sheer number of these so-called routes. As long as one understands their function, which is easy to do if you understand the framework and more importantly multicast, there is no need to memorize them by heart. Most often, they'll be seen in detail at either the time of provisioning or during troubleshooting. And at that time, you can easily use a reference such as an RFC or a configuration guide or maybe this video. And you could see which routes are missing or incorrect. With that in mind, I would venture a guess that the most remembered PIM message should be the hello message. In the same vein, there are four auto discovery or AD routes defined. Why four, you may ask, when PIM only needed one? A part of that answer is that PIM is essentially an intra-AS protocol. With BGP though, and especially with MVPNs or VPNs of any kind, we may have to provide inter-AS communications. So while one route discovers intra-AS MVPN PEs, the second route is exclusively for inter-AS auto discovery. Well, that still leaves a third and a fourth route. Uh, at this point, unfortunately, we have not introduced the peripherals that would be required to discuss and understand those routes. So what we'll do is we'll shelf them, but only for now. We'll come back to them later. Next message to consider is the PIM register message. Well, this is being replaced in BGP via the source active route. Not much more to discuss here, except that a PE discovers a source in a customer site. It could do it via a CE or it could be an RP that receives a PIM register message, but that's just the details. But once the PE knows about an active source, it can alert all of the other PEs in the MVPN about that active source via that BGP source active route. Think of it sort of like MSDP. It's pretty much the same as MSDP. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, PIM join messages must be replaced. Uh, there are two BGPC multicast routes that perform exactly that function. <laughs> Once again, why two? Well, if you think about it, there are really two types of PIM joins that need to be replaced. Star comma G or RPT joins and S comma G or SPT joins. So there is a BGPC multicast route for each one. Before we look at the details of some of these routes, there is an essential BGP MVPN component that must also be introduced. A major concept in pre-standards or Rosen-based MVPNs was that of a multicast distribution tree. It was simply a multicast tree in the provider core that connected the MVPN PEs for MVPN control traffic and also customer multicast traffic. In other words, as an MVPN PE receives a multicast packet from a CE, it must deliver that packet across the provider core to the other PEs in the MVPN, and it uses the multicast distribution tree or the MDT to perform that function. Well, Provider Multicast Service Interface or PMSI takes the same concept, but abstracts it. So essentially, the overlay trees have now been instantiated as PMSI tunnel interfaces. In other words, 
packets that need to be switched over the default MDT can now be passed to something called the IPMSI or inclusive PMSI tunnel, tunnel interface. And similarly, packets intended for data MDTs can be handed over to the SPMSI or the selective PMSI tunnel interface. If these concepts, by which I mean data MDT and default MDT, they are new to you or you need to refresh them, please watch video one and video four from our MVPN series. Links in the description box. Next, the concern is how to share a PE's locally configured state throughout the MVPN. By that, what we mean is that all PEs must know where to find their counterparts and how to reach them. This could be on a multi-point to multi-point tree, such as a BIDER tree in PIM or an MP to MP LSP in MLDP. Alternatively, it could be a set of point to multi-point trees, such as PIM SSM trees or MLDP P to MP LSPs. For MP to MP trees, multi-point to multi-point trees, the configuration is much more static and that we saw a couple of times in our previous videos. For P2MP or point to multipoint trees, the situation could be far more dynamic. Again, for this information, you can refer to our MVPN video three, which optimizes Rosen GRE or default MDT with the use of PIM SSM groups, essentially a point to multipoint tree. But the gist is just like in that video, where each PE shared its configured PSPG or provider source provider group SSM tree information so that the other PEs could join the SSM tree as leaves, for most core tree protocols, we would need to do something similar. This is where the PMSI tunnel attribute comes into play. Now, it was possible to generate the actual MVPN routes that contained the tree information but since we are using BGP, a far more extensible way exist for, exists for us to share the same information. Instead of including the information in the NLRI, we could attach the information to the NLRI as a BGP attribute. So that is what the MVPN designers chose to do. And this attribute is the PMSI tunnel attribute. Once its functionality is understood, the attribute becomes fairly simple. Shelving the flags field for right now, the most important field in this is the tunnel type. This is how next generation MVPN solution is able to scale the model by giving the operator a variety of options to choose from when it comes to the core trees. The supported core trees or tunnel types, not an, not an exhaustive list, but they include MLDP and RSVP TE multipoint LSPs, PIM signaled IP multicast trees, and even ingress replication, essentially simulated multicast, sometimes also called replicated unicast. The type of tunnel used by the local PE, well, that is contained in this tunnel type field. So far, so good. Also, let us ignore the MPLS label for a second and skip to the tunnel identifier. Each tunnel type has its own unique or relevant data that it must share. So for example, this data for a PIM tree could be the source IP address and the group number, the PSPG that we just talked about. In other words, that's the SG that the remote PEs can join. For MLDP LSPs, it would be the FEC or the opaque value that the remote PEs must signal via their MLDP processes. We have not covered RSVP yet, but for that core tree, the important information would be the extended tunnel ID and the P2MP ID that is specific to RSVPTE. Finally, let's talk about ingress repl replication. In ingress replication, the underlying packet is unicast. So in order for the receiving PE to distinguish a true unicast packet from a replicated unicast packet, some additional information must exist in the packet because their destinations are going to look the same. This problem is solved by the MPLS label. Yep, that's the field that we just skipped. So for the tunnel type ingress replication, the PE will also include a locally generated label, which it attaches to the ingress replication tree or the packets. 
So when seen on the data packet, that NPLS label will allow the local PE to decipher the packet as being received on a PMSI. Therefore, the TENL ID is just a local IP address, but must be advertised along with an MPLS label. For a majority of scenarios, that is the main use of MPLS label. There are some advanced use cases, so where you basically take mul or where you aggregate multiple MVPNs and use the same PMSI to do that. And there you also use the label to multiplex. But for our scope, other than IR or ingress replication, the MPLS label advertised is always zero and it is ignored upon reception. So it's not an explicit null, it's just ignored. Lastly, there's only one flag defined so far, and this is the leaf information required flag. Unfortunately for a single bit flag, the explanation required is at least 15 minutes long. So we'll shelve it for right now and come back to it at a relevant time. Those of you who are still here after the PMSI tunnel attribute explanation, rejoice. We're moving to the actual routes. Unfortunately, due to the persnickety nature of the RFC, each of these routes seems to have a name that is like at least 10 words long, or at least it seems like that. But look past the name, the actual routes end up fairly simple, I promise you. Let's look at the first one. It is an auto discovery route, which serves to join all the MVP and PEs in the AS to the default MDT, whose other name is that's right, inclusive PMSI or IPMSI. So when you combine this fact, combine the fact that it is a route to join you to the inclusive PMSI and it is an intra-AS route, you can understand the long name. Intra-AS IPMSI AD route or intra-autonomous system inclusive provider multicast service interface auto discovery route. See, I told you 10. Uh, words at a minimum, but simple route. The NLRI itself, just two fields. The first one is the RD or the route distinguisher. And that is just basically to keep the route unique from the same route that would be generated from multiple MVPNs. And secondly, the IP address of the advertising MVPN PE. Theoretically, any reachable address on the MVPN PE, but let's admit it's going to be the loopback zero interface, 99.9% .9 of the cases. So it's the loopback zero interface. The RD or the route distinguisher is the same as the L3 VPN RD because they're part of the same VRF. So you configure the RD, RD on the VRF. It's used for L3 VPN. It's also used for MVPN. But is that enough information for the other PEs to join the IPMSI? Well, no. But remember, the PMSI tunnel attribute, right with all of the required information about the inclusive PMSI tree, would now be attached as an attribute to the advertisement of this route. And there you go. Life is complete. Everybody else can use that information to join this PE. We will look at this in much more depth in an upcoming demo, but for now, just remember, the route is important for forming the IPMSI or the default MDT. Another somewhat long-winded but really easy to understand route is the SPMSI AD route. Breaking it down, auto discovery route, facilitate the formation of data MDTs this time or selective PMSI, and that's it. It's a selective PMSI auto discovery route. So going back to the previous videos, what information do we need to form the data MDT? Two major items should come to mind, right? The C multicast group or the customer multicast group that the PE will map to this data MDT, right? And the customer source or the CS that will originate the stream. So CS, CG. Combine those with almost always, you would need the RD and you have the route. So take that information, combine it with the RD and you have the route. So let's look at this route from top to bottom. You have the RD, already explained what that does, same as the L3VPN uh, VRF. 
than the multicast source, which really just means the C multicast source. So the C multicast group is next, right? That's the fourth field, so or the fifth field for those who can actually count. So the fifth field is the C multicast group. And finally, the router's IP address. And that is tying the bundle neatly together. Now you may ask about the lengths, right? What are the lengths doing here? Well, that's very simple. This route or this attribute or this route really would facilitate mapping both IPv4 and IPv6. So that's why the length of these sources and groups is variable, but that's about it. But again, we seem to be missing the second half of the data MDT the provider tree inside the provider core that this CSCG would be mapped to. 10 points, which basically translate to our respect. If you guessed that information, or if you knew rather that that information was carried in the PMSI tunnel attribute. Well, hopefully you're beginning to realize the power of decoupling that information, the information about the tree from the information about the routes and carrying it separately. Well, as an ode to the flexibility of the MVP and framework, with just those two routes, the ones that we learned about just those two routes, combined with the PMSI attribute, we are off to the races with our first standards based MVP and NG configuration or profile. So in the next video, we take our previously configured profile zero and enhance it with some BGP goodness, specifically BGP auto discovery or BGP AD. As advertised, the rest of the components will remain exactly the same. For the curious who want a head start, the profile becomes from profile zero to profile three when you look at the Cisco documents. Till then, I'd like to thank you for joining us and urge you to stay tuned for our next video. Thanks.